Hello there friends and welcome. By popular request, today's Pathfinder guide will be all about multiclassing. Pathfinder is a game with a massive amount of classes, especially when you consider each one also has a lot of archetypes, and then we also have prestige classes. Multiclassing means, well, starting as something and then changing into another class, for many different purposes. Before getting into each of the best options, I just want to explain the logic behind multiclassing, its main advantages and also downsides. Usually, you want to multiclass into something that is quite front-loaded, that is, offers a lot of benefits with just one starter level. And I'll give you many examples of that. Usually, you'll be getting abilities that increase your attack rolls and damage, or in a lot of cases, increase your AC bonuses by massive amounts for tanking purposes. To put it simply, multiclassing can grant you not only further specialization into what you want your build to excel at, but also versatility. Now, it does have two major downsides. First, be sure to keep an eye on the base attack bonus progression of the class you're multiclassing into. Classes like, let's say, Vivisectionist from Alchemist have average base attack bonus, medium, which means with one level, they won't gain anything. So we'll stunt your base attack bonus progression slightly. Base attack bonus is tied to getting more attacks per round. Usually you get one extra attack at 6 BAB, then 11, and the last one at 16. If the class you're multiclassing into has high base attack bonus progression, then don't worry because you always have the max regardless. But for medium and low ones, it can be a bit troublesome, at least early on. But as always, there will be ways of overcoming that, especially through the arcane transformation spell, which sets your BAB to the max anyway, so you go to your level regardless, and can be cast from scrolls. Now, one of the major downsides of multiclassing is that as far as the base spellcasting classes, like let's say Sorcerer, Wizard, Oracle, Cleric, and so on. If you multiclass into something else, you will delay your spellcasting progression. Usually this class's power is directly tied to their spells. It's even more annoying for classes that already have a delay, like let's say Sorcerer, who learns spells one level later than Wizards. If you were to be, for example, a level 1 Sorcerer and then got a level into Wizard, your Sorcerer would now be limited to just 19 caster level, as far as normal class progression, and would then have to learn spells two levels later. With that out of the way, let's now focus into what the best multiclassing options are. Alright, so we are already starting with one of the best dipping or multiclassing options, Alchemist and the classic Vivisectionist. For just one level, you'll have one dice of sneak attack, but most importantly access to the highly OP Mutagen ability, this enhances any physical ability score of your choice by a plus 4 alchemical bonus. Precisely because it is classified as alchemical, it will stack with quite a lot of other stuff, including, let's say, enhancement bonuses from gear and spells. It does apply a penalty to a mental score, but usually characters that go for vivisectionists don't care for that. It even enhances your natural armor class too by a stacking bonus to AC. When I say stacking, it's because it's a special natural bonus that will stack with other natural AC sorcerers too, including common ones like Bark Skin, or Amulets of Natural AC. With just one level, it's only going to last for 10 minutes of real time, but that's usually more than enough. You'll even get access to minor spellcasting too, but in this case, as you'll be limited to just a single caster level, chances are you just want to be spamming True Strike, because, well, it works regardless of CL. When it comes to the Barbarian class, it's all about Instinctual Warrior, because at level 2, you'll get the Cunning Illusion ability, which lets you apply your Wisdom modifier to AC. So for high Wisdom characters like Clerics or Shamans that want to have high AC as well, this can work. Your Wisdom bonus will also be added to Initiative 2, which is great for tanking characters because it reduces the chances of being caught flat-footed. Whenever you are flat-footed, you'll have lower AC. You'll also get a special focus at Rage. Unlike the normal Barbarian Rage, the number of rounds you can Rage will be based on your Wisdom, and this will increase both your attack rolls and also Wisdom, so it has synergy with the other abilities, right? While the amount of Rage you'll have will be very limited, remember that as early as around level 5 to level 6, you can just acquire the Limitless Rage ability for infinite Raging anyways, even with but two levels of Instinctual Warrior. Plus, it is a high base attack bonus class too, so won't interfere with your attack rolls. 
or number of attacks per round progression. The next class with plenty of multiclassing potential is Cavalier. Beast Rider can be great because it gives you access to any pet in the game as early as level 1. Because some classes in the game like let's say Magus and Arcane Rider are limited in pack selection, usually to just the horse, Paladin Stew, if before getting into one of these classes you start as a Beast Rider, even just one level will work, you'll have access to any pet and then you'll keep progression in this pet through your other pet giving classes. You even get one teamwork feat added for free and the limited but rather useful ability to share it with all of your allies. With just one level it won't last very long, just three rounds, but because you can pre buff of this, three rounds is more than enough for let's say the bosses and the tough encounters, especially for useful ones like Shake It Off. Now Gendarme is another amazing choice for multiclassing, First, like most Cavaliers, it will continue your pet's progression. So usually, unlike let's say Beast Rider, which is something you want to start with to give you any pet, when it comes to Gendarme, this is something you want to become afterwards, right? So you start the game as something else. But most importantly, because Gendarme offers a lot of bonus feats. You have one at level 1, then another at level 3. The Cavalier's Charge ability can be pretty powerful too. Charge is very good in this game, and this will boost your attack rolls by a further plus shoe, untyped, so stacks with other stuff. But anyways, the feats Gendarme can pick are special because they can be anything, just like fighter bonus feats. Usually the other Cavalier archetypes like Beast Rider are limited to teamwork feats when it comes to their bonus feats. Because Gendarme is something you want to have more than just one levels into even when multiclassing, you also get to pick and benefit from a Cavalier order. Ideally, you want to go with Cockatrice, because you then get yet another important extra feat. Dazzling Display added for free at level 2 Cavalier, which is then a prerequisite for the highly powerful Shatter Defenses feat. Fighter has some pretty interesting choices as well, but usually you want to go with Mutation Warrior. As with most Fighter archetypes, you have amazing bonus feat progression. That's one at level 1, another right at level 2, and then another one for every two other levels, so 4, 6 and so on. When it comes to Mutation Warrior, however, right at level 3, you'll get the Mutagen, which works exactly the same way as the Alchemist version. And because fighters and the classes that want to multiclass with fighter are all about physical scores, well, the higher your dexterity, or most importantly strength, the better. The bonuses don't just stop there, because as early as level 5, you get to access weapon training which will enhance both your attack rolls and damage with certain groups of weapon. This is more generic than, let's say, weapon focus, as weapons here are covered in groups. While being a level 5 fighter will only grant you a plus 1 bonus with these weapons, it's actually very easy to increase this further through gear, especially gloves that will further empower your weapon training ability by up to plus 2. Being a level 4 fighter will also let you acquire the Fighter Unique Weapon Specialization feat for plus 2 bonus to damage. While Greater Weapon Specialization will take way longer, remember that the Mythic Weapon Specialization ability, well, it just requires you to have the normal Weapon Specialization, so even better. If you want to go as high as level 8, you can also acquire Greater Weapon Focus, which does have synergy with Mythic Weapon Focus. I suppose if you are a pet class, nowadays there is also something to be said about getting just one level of Hunter. Most of the archetypes get a pet at level 1, so we'll continue your pet progression, but most importantly, their Animal Focus ability now provides inherent bonuses to the physical scores of your pet. You actually have to choose one score. Usually it's going to be either Strength or Dexterity. Inherent is a very rare type of bonus, so we'll stack with everything else. Theoretically, you could also use this on your character themselves, it's just that for that, the pet has to be dead. And well, if you bother with a pet class, chances are you'll want your pet alive. Pets are that good in Wrath of the Righteous. You would also get some minor spell casting, but at most you would just be using this for lead blades to enhance your physical power or hurricane bow for bow attacks, although they would have very low duration, but still plenty of time for you no know, bosses. Now let us get into Monk, another class that has been used for cheesy multiclassing purposes. I'm guessing ever since the 3rd edition of Dungeons & Dragons. For starters, most of the monk archetypes 
allow you to apply your Wisdom modifier to your armor class. So just like Instinctual Warrior is great for classes that have high Wisdom and want to have high AC as well, like Druid, Cleric. Just a reminder that this will not stack with Instinctual Warrior. Plus, both of the classes actually have incompatible alignments. Barbarians have to be chaotic and monks lawful. Do note that just like Instinctual Warrior, however, this will only work if you are unarmored. But usually the classes that have high wisdom can make up through other ways. Like, for example, Bracers of Armor. Monks also get the Flurry of Blows ability at level 1, which lets them perform an additional unarmed attack or through the special monk weapons. If you're coming from Dungeons & Dragons 3rd edition, you might wonder how this works with Treat and shape-shifting classes and forms. Well, as far as I'm aware, this only applies on unarmed attacks, and the forms each have their own natural attacks, which is different than unarmed. Monk multiclasses are the king of cheese, but Scale Fist takes it to a whole other level. This is a charisma-based monk. So his AC bonus will work based on your Charisma modifier instead. And get this, unlike the normal Wisdom Monk AC bonus, the Charisma to AC from Scaled Fist will stack with all resources and also enhance your armor class by Charisma, as I will show you later on, such as for example, the Nature's Whisper Revelation from Nature Oracle. So you're getting double your Charisma modifier. Sohei Monk can be pretty interesting too. It's the Mounted Monk archetype. You start with the horse pet, and unlike most of the other monks, at level 6 you can pick the weapon training ability pretty similar to a fighter, except you have somewhat limited weapon selection. But unlike the usual monk with fists and monk weapons, you get a lot of other weapon types added to your character like bows, crossbows, pole arms, most importantly pole arms. And unless this is still bugged, I'm pretty sure they should be allowed to use their flurry of blows abilities also with weapons that they have training into. So if you picked pole arms, essentially you would get a free attack with a Bardisha, a Shard, or a Glaive. For our last benefit, this is generic for most of the monks. At level 1 you can also pick a bonus feat, but it has a limited selection. Usually it's going to be combat reflexes, dodge, crane style, blind fight, improved initiative, or deflect arrows. Crane style can be quite useful for characters that multiclassing monk for armor class. After all, this will enhance your AC by even higher amounts, and reduce the penalty to attack rolls when fighting defensively, which also increases AC. Now let's talk about Oracle. You'll want any archetype that offers a revelation at level 1, because this is where most of your power will come from. Ideally, you'll want to use Oracle just like Scaled Fist to provide even more armor class to your Charisma-focused characters. By starting with the Nature Mystery, you can then pick the Nature's Whisper Revelation right at level 1, which just like Scaled Fist as I said before, lets you apply your Charisma modifier to AC when unarmored. And once again, it actually does stack with Scaled Fist AC. For your Oracle Curse, they mostly provide downsides now, so I would just go with something inoffensive like Plagued, or I suppose Hellbound and Demonic. Now let's cover Paladin. Paladins have always been famous for multiclassing too, with other charisma focused classes, mostly because of the Divine Grace ability granted at level 2, which lets you apply your charisma bonus to all of your saving throws. This can even stack with the level 2 Paladin spell Bestow Grace, which does the same, but when multiclassing you wouldn't have it, as it only comes at level 8 or 7 if you have high charisma. Smite Eve, on the other hand, will be gained at level 1, and for a game like Wrath of the Righteous, where 99% of the enemies are evil, it can be quite powerful. Plus, once again, for armor class stacking purposes, it can work as yet another way of adding our charisma bonus to armor class, because Might Evil will add it as deflection modifier, and we also have a certain gear that will enhance it to sacred, I believe. The only downside is, with just one level or paladin or two, if you want to go for Divine Grace, you would only have but a single use of Smite Evil. There's a ring that also increases it by another use, but, well, you would really only have this for the bosses and the tough encounters. Considering they are the enemies you want to actually smite, it might not be that much of a downside. Smite Evil doesn't just work defensively, because your Charisma modifier will also be added to attack rolls, to ensure you hit the enemy true. Most of the Paladin archetypes are fine for multiclassing purposes, because usually... The stuff they lose only comes later. Just be sure to go with one that has Smite Evil at level 1. 
The Vine Hunter has neat synergy with ranged characters, since you also get the precise shot a must have for any ranged build right at level 1. Alright, now let's talk about Ranger. They also have a very powerful multi-classing option. In this case, the classic Demon Slayer dip. With just one level of Demon Slayer, you'll have favored enemy against all of the demons in the game, which means a plus two untyped bonus to AB and damage against them. By default, all cat nerfed favored enemy outsider in Wrath of the Righteous. When it comes to demons, they split them into three different types, magic, slaughter and strength, which is kind of annoying. Demon Slayer bypasses that because at the cost of not being able to choose their favored enemy, they have it against all of the demon types for free. It's also a high base attack bonus class, so great for other high BAB combos like Fighter and so on. Rogues also have two very powerful multi-classing options. First, Knife Master. Like most rogues, you get weapon finesse for free at level 1, one dice of sneak attack too, but most importantly, their sneak stab ability will increase the sneak attack damage with daggers and other similar weapons, most importantly, Kukris which have the highest critical range of them all, it will change their sneak dice from d6 to d8. And get this, it will work for any sneak attack dice you have from any other class, even the Trickster Mythic Path. <laughs> so with just one level of Knife Master, you are getting d8 on all of your subsequent sneaks. Because you also have Weapon Finesse, you might as well start with this if you prefer, or just multi-class for one level later. Rowdy is another very interesting choice, I've just recently done a guide that shows how OP Rowdy Rogue can be, but even for just multi-classing, they get the highly powerful Vital Strike ability for free at level 1. Vital Strike can truly maximize your damage at the cost of limiting you to just one attack. There are ways to overcome that though, such as attacks of opportunity. By default, even if you were a high best attack bonus class like a fighter, you would only be able to acquire a Vital Strike at level 6. They get it at level 1. Just like the Knife Master Rogue, they can get additional damage on their Vital Strike based on their sneak attack dice to the 6 for every dice they have. Unlike the normal rogues though, they are better focused for strength characters because they don't have weapon finesse for free at level 1, but they do get martial weapons proficiency, so they can truly specialize in most weapon types. So trust me, with just one level of Rowdy or Knife Master depending on what you want to build your character as, focused on sneak attacks or focused on vital strikes, that will be more than enough. Because Rowdy also gets the other vital strikes for free, you might as well consider multi-classing away from it at level 11 plus for the last one. Or if you just want the usual vital strike for the early game to easily one-shot enemies, just get one level. I suppose there's something to be said about multi-classing into Slayer 2. At the very least, they are a high base attack bonus class and they have the study target ability this works better if you already have sneak attack from another class, because whenever you apply sneak attack, you also automatically activate study target for a plus one bonus to weapon and damage. As far as I've tested, just be warned that this won't stack with the study target feature from Sanctified Slayer. Right at level 2, you can also pick a Slayer talent, which works in quite a lot of ways. You can pick a bonus feat, a combat style feat like a ranger, and even some of the rogue special talents. Sorcerer has some pretty interesting choices as well, and it's mostly because of their special Bloodline abilities. Just at level 1, your Sorcerer will get Bloodlines, and depending on what you pick, they can give you a lot of bang for your buck with just one level. Cross Blooded, I'd say, is the best choice for that, because they get two Bloodlines right at level 1. Their penalty of having delayed spellcasting progression doesn't really matter because you'll just be picking it for the bloodlines anyway with just one level. There are a lot of choices, but usually the best ones to me are Draconic Bloodlines, usually red, because it enhances the power of your fire spells. The Fey Bloodline, as it will empower your mind-affecting enchantment spells. And the Undead Bloodline can allow your enchantment spells to also affect Undead. The other bloodlines can have decent abilities, but they don't come at level 1, which is what we want. Even with just one level of Sorcerer, you can at the very least still cast, let's say, True Strike. And do note that the Bloodline abilities that I've just covered will also apply to spells from any other class. So let's say you have just one level of Sorcerer and the rest into Wizard. You'll still get the bonus to fire damage from Red Dragon to Wizard spells and so on. Now let's cover Witch. 
Amusingly enough, they do have some multi-classing potential too. First, they already start with a Hex at level 1. Hexes have a lot of different uses, usually to either debuff the enemies or buff your own characters. I'd say this can go in two different ways. First, the Ice Plant Hex. This is the classic one picked if you want to multi-class for even higher AC. It will provide a stacking plus 2 natural bonus to AC, and pretty early in the game you can also find an amulet that enhances it even further. On the other hand, you can also go for the Protective Luck Hex, that can sharply reduce the chances of enemies hitting you. The main issue is with just one level of Witch, it would only last for one round, but it is a spammable ability, you have unlimited uses of it. Now, I've heard some great things about the Witch of the Veil archetype, thanks to the Shrouded Step ability you get at level 2, which lets you become invisible as a swift action, and this has some cheesy potential with soloing, at least as far as I've heard anyways. Now let's go for Wizard. I think Elemental Specialist has rather niche uses, but can excel at what it allows you to do, as just at level 1, through the Focused Element ability, you can select one element of choice, and then you get the very unique ability to convert all other elemental spell damage into of that chosen element. This has some synergy with, let's say, the Winter Witch Prestige class, which relies on you casting cold spells, or just to, let's say, convert other spells into fire, as we have a lot of gear in the game that boosts fire damage even further. And through the Ascended Element Mythic ability, you can just inflict full damage regardless of element immunities anyways. Now, when it comes to all of the Prestige classes, I personally think I would only do them justice by covering them on a separate guide, so I'll be leaving them for later. But well, this was it for my multi-classing guide. If you think I've missed something, please be sure to comment down below. And as always, if you found this guide useful, please remember to like, subscribe and also consider becoming a channel member. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.